Hello and happy Thursday, everybody. Josh here with On The Wrong Lead, and we got some more derby prep action coming your way. Got a fun guest. No Caleb this week because, um, I don't know, he's off doing nefarious things, whatever whatever Caleb does on at MIT. Nobody knows. Nobody asks questions either. But, you yeah, know, he's doing his thing. But uh, yeah, we got uh, we got two big preps this weekend. We got the, uh, the Florida Derby at Gulfstream Park, and then we have Oaklawn Park having the Arkansas Derby. And I thought it was only fitting, uh, since we are going to talk about the Arkansas Derby, that we have the Wolf of Oaklawn himself, Mister Chase Sessoms. Chase, uh, you want to know what's funny, Chase? Uh, I was just thinking about this. You'd mentioned before. We uh, we got on stream. Um, hey, I'm really glad you're going to be here for the entire episode, you know, because last time I got paged for a work issue and yeah. I had to hop off. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually on call this week and I'm like only on call like once every, I, I forget how many weeks it is, but it's like once every like seven or eight weeks or something like that. And it, it just yeah. happens to be that, that long. Uh, I haven't been, I haven't got paged yet. I've only been paged like, three times in the like nearly three years i've been at my at my job so um chances are good i will not get paged today but uh it's good it's good that's to good. have you here man it's good to be here it's good to it's good to join and uh good to be busy this week and uh good to be you know when the high holidays roll around you like to be around your friends you know so uh it's it's good to be with you and mart oh damn it kind of spilled the beans on Who's coming up next, didn't I? <laughs> hey, it's all right. I, everyone knows that Mark's going to be on every week. Um, there's there's nary a, a show that Mark misses. Um, old Reliable, Mr. Mark Habitat. Yeah, Old Reliable. Uh, by the way, there are technically three major derby preps this weekend. You forgot about Dubai. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And not I forget great, about Dubai driving. because I, I still do not forgive what Ryan Moore did to Mendelssohn. Um. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to go with uh, the white, white snow or whatever that horse's name was that decided that thunder, thunder snow. Thunder snow. There we go. The whole breaking out of the gate thing didn't quite understand how to do that. Like that was a that was apparently a problem. You think they would have put a gate Dude, in the gate before they went to the you know, starting gate of the derby? But who am I? Chase, you look visibly, visually, visibly sorry, visibly shook when he said thunder snow. Did you have a did you have a bet on uh, on Thunder Snow on that derby? <laughs> no, no, I oh. didn't fortunately. And uh I I also I like that Thunder Snow has become like a verb for me. It's like the horse just just fucking thunder snowed right there in the gate. <laughs> um who was uh, who else was really bad? Improbable. Improbable was really bad in the gate. No, I I didn't I just thought it was hilarious. I thought the Thunder Snow break Especially like the horse coming in from the desert, breaking in the in the muddy Kentucky Derby, just being like icky hooves, icky hooves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So we do we do have a, a couple of Dubai races this weekend as well. Um, but uh, we're gonna actually we're gonna focus on a Gulfstream uh, Park card. Uh, do the uh, the late pick five there. But I figured, hey, we got Chase here. Why don't we start with this Oak Lawn Park Arkansas Derby? Uh, it's gonna be race 12 here at Oaklawn Park. Uh, we're gonna be going a mile and eighth on the main track, aka the only track at Oaklawn Park. And your morning line favorite is going to be Moose at eight to five, Timberlake at nine to five, and then you have Mystic Dan at five to two. And you get double digits on anybody else here on the morning line. Uh, Chase, as our guest, I will let you go first. How do you see this race? Yeah, I'm not. <sighs> I'm not all the way a chalk eating weasel, but I'm a little bit of a, mostly a chalk eating weasel because I do think that this is Timberlake's race. And I honestly think that it's a race between Muth and Timberlake. 
And the only way to really get value out of this race is to beat Muth out of second or third place. Try to put together some exact as quite possibly with Timberlake Heat on top and some of these longer uh, shots, um, you know, to actually get up and get a piece. Uh, I'm not using liberal arts. I might include because the horse can definitely pick up pieces, but I was using like uh, uh, the four time for truth. Uh, as another horse that I used underneath, uh, the nine mystic Dan, of course. Uh, and then, uh, the, uh, uh, eight just steel, uh, who had the kind of that closing move last time a little bit, ran a fairly decent race was my kind of outside shot to, to win the rebel. So I, I'm going to try to, you know, probably in horizontals do it that way, play Timberlake as a single and then key on top and then like an exacta and then a trifecta. Uh, with the sports that I mentioned in second and like seeing move in third. Yeah, so of course Josh steps away and I'm supposed to now wax on poetically about a two horse race, which is uh just just awesome. But you know, I, I, Muther, Muther Timberlake wins this at like ninety five percent of the time. I, I think it's really hard to get to anybody else. It's a terrible betting race, uh, unless you're trying to get, you know, cute with a, a trifactor or a super factor or something like that. Um, I don't think I necessarily have a favorite uh you know, I mean, you know, honestly, Muth, if he wins, can't go to the Kentucky Derby starting gate. Timberlake is already in the starting gate. So is there an argument to be made that neither one of them are cranked and they're going to try something new? I don't know. For in a million dollar race, probably not. Um, so, so I, I, you know, I, I think if I have to have a preference, it's probably Timberlake, just given the fact that this probably matters less for Muth. But it's also Bob Baffert. He might just want to F you to horse racing. So I don't know. Um, I have a really hard time getting to anybody else. I, I think if you want to play this, you do something like you take, you find that that other horse, somebody like a liberal arts, and you key that horse in maybe second and third and something like a try. Um, and, you know, but it's just, it's it's not a great betting race. It's not a great race overall. I wish it came up with a more competitive field. Um, and... I don't got a lot more to say about it. I've waxed poetically for long enough and we're going to make Josh talk with a mouthful of food now. It's, it's either going to be a gigantic up, you know, long shot that no one sees coming or a two horse race and the worst betting race on the card. Like, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a really good card. Otherwise, uh, quite yeah, honestly. it's a great card. Otherwise just a terrible race on a great card. And I will say though, that if, you will get every bit of every price on every other horse in this field um, because Muth and Timberlake are going to be at least cut in half off the morning lines, both of them. Um, yeah. And you're so there's going to be value everywhere. If you like a price, take your shots, but uh, just not the kind of place that I think I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, I think Muth should win this race. I don't know. 50% of the time. And then I think Timberlake wins like the other 30 or 40 percent of the time. So I, I really I have a hard time making a like real valid way to bet this unless you like I said, if, if you feel really strongly about one of these long shots, I think, Mark, you were talking a little bit about liberal arts before, yeah. um, you know, has got uh, close into a real, real slow pace. And that Southwest that um, that mystic uh, was it mystic Dan one. Um, you know, that was a kind of weird track. It was muddy, which, you know, it often is at Oak Lawn. Um, so, uh, you know, Mystic Dan also kind of came from off of it a little bit. So, um, maybe, maybe you feel like you, you upgrade Mystic Dan a little bit. And I mean, um, Brisnet really liked that last race. Um, but I have a feeling that the other, other figures probably aren't nearly as, uh, as good. Um, so, I don't know. I, I have a hard time, I think, getting around those two. And then, like I said, like a horse like Mystic Dan makes a bit of sense. But if he goes up at like three to one, I, I don't really think that that's really like value on, on that type of horse. I think that's still a bit of an underlay. Um, but that's because I just feel so strongly about, I think, these, these other these other favorites. Um, I mean, I, I would probably single Muth uh, as your most likely winner and try to move that way but uh i i will definitely not if, if somebody else sees something else and, and feels like they can you know make value out of this um more power to you but i i probably won't have a single penny uh going through this race 
yeah, I, I you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I think I probably personally draw a bit of a line to the Southwest in any of the figures that came out of that race, just given the fact that it was sloppy that day. It was, a uh, you know, Oakland does some weird stuff when it's, when it's wet. Um, and it's not, they're not calling for any weather. This shockingly, they're not calling for any weather on Arkansas Derby day, uh, for the first time. And I think I, as long as I can remember, but it's supposed to be sunny and like 75. So Mark, um, how, does, how does it feel to, in, so. to get to piss from a great height on a track for its weather after, after Saratoga this summer? Oh goodness. Uh, yeah. I, I, that is, that is valid. That's valid. No, you're, you're yeah. not wrong there. Um, yeah. but, uh, no, I, I, I just, uh, you know, it's, it's supposed to be nice weather. I think you, you have to, you know, I know a lot of people are getting really, uh, you know, really keyed up on liberal arts on, you know, made a big move into what was a you know, slower pace. Um, I, I just, I think that that's, it was more a factor of him getting across the surface better than some of the others did. And, uh, it, I, he, he has to prove it to me on, you know, if a, he's got to be, you know, step up the speed figures B he's got to prove it to me on a, on a faster track. So. Uh, PDT asking, is that L Michael J? Is that an AI Michael J. Fox Teen Wolf poster behind Chase? No, that's just uh, jockeys riding horses. Just jockeys riding horses. I don't know what what drugs PDT's on, but uh, you can uh, you can send them to Chase at uh, PO Box uh, Thirty. <laughs> um, no, but for real though, give him my address. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, if it, it felt weird having you on Chase and not talking about this race, I, it's unfortunate that um, that it kind of came up. I don't want to say bad, right? Because I think I think Muth is a really nice horse, Timberlake nice horse. You know, we we've talked at nauseum about just how weird this Derby Trail is with you know a certain someone having having very good horses and you know the owners keeping them with them. So. Um, that's, you know, that's their, their right to do. Um, so, I mean, we, we could talk, we can talk at length about that, but Chase, I know you've, uh, you've covered the rest of this card and, and not to put you on the spot too much, but anything else that kind of stuck out with you on this card, maybe, maybe a fun long shot you got, or, or maybe a strong, uh, strong, real strong opinion you have in one of these earlier races. Uh, I had one in race eight. There's an eight to one I really like, uh, the seven Underhill's tab. Uh, that should just get this beauty of a wide stocking trip that plays really well at Oakland. Like, as Mark has pointed out, like this is the first like extended dry period that we've had at, at Oakland Park. And I think I something's telling me this fucker's going to be scraped down for speed, dude. And because of that, I'm starting to, to look at early speed uh horses that are that are going to be like first run sort of sort of depth off of the uh off of the early speed because i'm not sure anyone is going to be able to come from that far off i mean otherwise i'd be like hell yeah give me liberal arts um give me liber liberal arts to, you know one once today and twice on sunday even um but i i you know i i think that speed is going to carry very well it's going to play for a horse like underhill's tab uh, extremely well. Um, and especially cause it looks like this horse really kind of liked the stretch out. And I think is going to like the stretch out to, to eight and a half even more. It just kind of had a, a weird trip, uh, the last time it tried eight and a half for long. So I'm not really concerned by that. Uh, so I think might just kind of be asking for this extra distance. Then it gets Tyler Gaffleon up too, which is like, I was talking to Mark about this before we started, it's so weird. It's so weird that Tyler Gaffleone is in Arkansas for this card, not in the in the at Gulfstream Park, and he's got like ten mounts. So it's a really kind of hard to tell who he's who he's there for. I doubt it's Underhill's tab on an allowance, you know, race uh, early in the card. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, Funky Bob Medina and uh, Tyler Gaffleone have one here. Nice. Let's uh, all right. Let's move on over here to the the Gulfstream Park card here. Um, Mark, before I jump into the late pick five, I don't know. Did you end up capping the whole card? You just capped the, uh, nah, I just, the late I just sequence. Capped, uh, yeah, I just late five. Yep. Okay. I was just curious cause I know sometimes you, you end up going through the entire card, see if you had anything else, uh, else kind of prepared for, um, for that, but we'll go ahead. We'll start with, uh, with race 10 here. This is going to be the start of the, uh, late pick five. We're going to be going a mile and a half on the turf. 
um, in the Grade Three Orchid, and you know this is this is kind of an interesting race. Uh, you got uh, a couple of short prices in here. You got uh, you know Chad at eight to five and McCulloch as your favorite. You have a uh, you have a horse shipping in from France uh, at your favorite track, Mark, that you you haven't been to yet. You want to say it or you want me to say it? Lachan. There you go. Uh, Le, Le Mahana here uh, for Christophe Clement and Joel Rosario at two to one. Um, I haven't seen I haven't seen the time form figs on this horse, so I, I'm not really sure where where to kind of go there. But Mark, I know you have some some hot takes later on in the card, but uh, I don't believe you listed this as one of your hot takes. So my guess is that you are going to be on a short price. So who do you got here? Yeah, I, I think it's really hard to get beyond McCulloch in here. Um, you know, I, I think when you look at this race, uh, McCulloch just kind of shows up for these types of efforts. He, you know, she is not the, you know, the classiest G ones, you know, knocking on all the G ones and, and winning all the things. But, uh, you know, at this kind of a level, these, uh, where there's a little less European invaders, they're not the classiest of the classiest of the top tier of, uh, of American racing. She just kind of shows up and performs. And, you know, her, if she brings her B game, she's in the 120s time form range. Everybody else in the, the field is, is, you know, it, it really has to struggle to, to get anywhere near that on their best day. So I, I don't even think she needs her A stuff in here to be, uh, you know, definitely class of the field. You know, there are some question marks in here. Work tab's a little bit light. Um, you know, she's coming off a long layoff. Chad Brown barn has not been clicking how it normally is. You know, he's only 11% on the, uh, you know, Gulf stream meet where he's normally, you know, almost 30% on a normal year. And honestly, a rad has not been doing really well for, uh, for Chad. They're only four for 23 on the meet. So, um, you know, there, there are some question marks, but she's by far and away the classiest horse in the field. And then again, you know, no real surprises here. Uh, La Mahana, uh, who's the only other horse in the field that has a win going this trip, uh, is, is an interesting player. Clement's been pretty good with his European shippers. He's hitting about a, you know, almost a 20% uh, clip with them. And, uh, Rosario is, uh, you know, he and, you know, I gotta say we, we can pick on Rosario. You know, we, we do it a lot, but, uh, He's Clamont's number one, you know, jock. That's where he goes to when he has good mounts. Um, her, you know, her European races are, are very good, albeit she's another one that at the top tier is just, you know, has, hasn't historically performed nearly as well. So comes here, does not get Lasix, but gets a trip she's comfortable with. And you know she can get the distance. And uh, going these marathon trips with a lot of the U.S. horses, that's that's something that's suspect. So uh, I, I think, you know, I, I would take McCulloch over La Bahana. Um, but you know, if she wins, no surprise there at all. I, I think this is a pretty formful race that that goes to you know exactly how it looks on paper. Yeah, I um, I, I saw it very similarly to you. Um, I, I thought, I think if you you know you cross a line through that uh, BC Philly and Mare turf, um, you know, the horses that McCulloch was facing in there, I mean, just do not compare to the horses that are in this race. Um, I mean, she was twenty-two to one in that field uh, when she has like gone over like three to one, like twice in her career, three times in her career. So, um, yeah, I she wasn't supposed to win that race, and you know, obviously, I think she ran to she ran to what what most people thought she would. Um, yeah, Charles in here, he's he's in there. Well, he's a six for fun. And, and I tend yeah. to agree. I, I I have a hard time getting around um, getting around McCulloch here. I think the one um, I I haven't done the work on to to look to see what those European races look like uh, on time form. So uh, I'll take a look. But that pro might be the only other horse I would use. And I'm only saying that because I don't know. You know, at this point, like, hey, we'll we'll have to look uh, look a little closer at those. Um, but like a horse like the four, surprisingly, like I want no part, no part of that horse. Five to two. That's a that's a takeout reducer uh, in this field, and I think everyone else is going to need to um, really make up a ton of uh, just m take a, a huge leap that I just don't see coming uh, in order to win this race. Um, what about you, Chase? I, uh, I mean, you either have to. You can't use both La Mahana and and McCulloch. You know, it's pretty much you. If you're using one, you have to be against the other. I decided to go ahead and use La Mahana. Um, 
buyer beware you know the the horse has never run on a fir- like an actual like firm turf course before it's been sloppy or sorry soft heavy kind of turf um the other problem is i also just kind of hate this race like there's no pace here there's never any pace in these mile and a half races it's a lot of how i handicap is trying to figure out the pace so uh that's why i often do dumb shit like take the two tower bridge uh who's the obvious pace in the race who knows maybe this horse gets brave Maybe gets a little pop going uh, back off of the all weather surface onto grass, or sorry, first onto grass, which Sherry DeVoe does a pretty good job with. I mean, the mother's spit out a turf winner before. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, if a horse would steal it from the front, I think it would be this one. I'm not sure if it happens, but I'd kind of like to have the, you know, Johnny V sitting chilly on the front. He's not wrong, dude. He's not wrong. <laughs> Wait, you're on grass right now? Oh, yeah. Well, totally. But oh. the races, too. Oh, I thought race. I said Wolf of Long Oak Lawn talking about races on grass. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Is Wolf of Oak Lawn on grass or the race on grass? Or yes. both? I think if there was a comma there after races, it would be better. It'd be more apropos. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. It reminded me it's time to take my insulin. There you go. All right, race 11, the Gulfstream Park Oaks, going a mile and 16th here on the main track, grade two, and uh, this is a, this is a nice little prep, I think, for, for the Oaks, and, um, you know, Mark, I'm a simple man, right? I, I, see, be I see an E8, I bet an E8, um, you know, I actually landed on three horses in this race, I thought this was a, a bit... Uh, more of a uh, wide open affair, and I didn't land on the four ways and means here, uh, which is the eight to five favorite. I'm going to be against uh, this horse uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one, horse has not gone more than two turns yet. It has not raced since September sixth of uh, 2023. So long layoff, two turns for the first time, and practical joke on top. I mean, like this. This is not a horse that should be getting two turns. I mean, maybe a mile, right? A practical. I'm not going to say that is hugely um, distance compromised, but just not not a horse. I don't think. I, I think that uh, I want to take a short price on this. Um, I, I always I always tell uh, my co-host Andrew Champagne. It's like the great actor Gregory Peck said, right? Never take a a short price on a horse doing something for the first time. Ah. Oh. This old Greg Peck, huh? Mark, who was it that said that? Um, it may have been Greg Peck because that, no, that Harvey Harvey Peck or Harvey something. Or a Har- right? Is it Harvey Peck? Yeah, yeah Harvey, Harvey, Harvey Peck. Peck yeah. yeah, he hates when I do that. Uh, and I'm glad that none of you guys knew who that was either. So it makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, he was uh, the Andy Sterling before Andy Sterling was Andy Sterling, right? No. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll, I'm sure we're gonna get canceled uh, after I make that joke on live live television. But I've, I've said my uh, worst. <laughs> um the air quote around television there brother yeah oh uh, yeah i don't know i let's say live stream but whatever speaking of television uh, a man who is who's definitely got a face for tv mr caleb knight look at that with the button down <laughs> shirt <too. laughs> I, i'm sorry i just i had to interrupt my dinner because i heard you attribute a quote to gregory peck <laughs> oh goodness <Yeah>. gracious <laughs> in honor uh, of the interest pain yeah um, but yeah, so I, I'm going to be against, uh, I'm going to be against ways and means. This is, I mean, this is just a candy ass horse as, as Caleb likes to call. Uh, we're, we're not going to have a single penny through this, but, um, yeah, I, I think trips could be candy assed. I didn't realize a horse could be a candy ass as well. Is, is the, is the verbiage expanded a little bit, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think, uh, there's a couple ways you can go here. I, I think the A Fiona's magic makes a ton of sense. Uh, coming off that Devona Dale win, um, you know, did have it uh, basically all her own way. Uh, you know, went 24 and 3, 47 and 2, which is not fast at Gulfstream Park. Um, I mean, obviously the second fraction picked up a little bit, but um, that 24 and 3 is just absolutely glacial. But, 
you know, was able to win it on the front end. Is a horse that's got six and a half speed if if needs to show it. Um, so I, I thought I thought the eight was was pretty interesting here uh, from a speed standpoint. Um, and then I thought just sitting just off of that horse, the six gun song uh, for Mark Hennig and, and John Velasquez. Uh, you know, coming off a uh, an optional claim of seventy five. Uh, I just thought that this was the, like, this is the type of trip, right? You want one of those hor forwardly placed horses. Um, and if if the um, eight Fiona's Magic turns out to be just cheap speed, I think Gunsong is going to be that horse that's sitting just off and, and should be able to, you know, just blaze on by and, and win. Um, but a horse that I did have a little bit of interest in uh, was this five into Champagne? Uh, shout out Andrew Champagne once again, um, and that was really because you know I'm looking for a horse that has passed other horses, but still has been forwardly placed. You know, this is a horse that has been third or fourth, uh, not necessarily you know coming from seventh or you know you know two and a half lengths off like like a horse that Ways and Means has. So I, I think if uh, you know, I, I see Charles mentioned here. He thinks the dirt track will be cranked for uh, for early speed. Um, I, I think when when that early speed on a, a track is like that, and that early speed does crumble, it's not the deep closers that get there, right? It's those presser horses that get there. And, and I think a horse like Five Into Champagne, if it does get stupid on the front end, might just you know sit just off enough that is able to make a run and and kind of pass over those tired horses. So. Um, I'm gonna go six and eight as my A's. I'm gonna go with five as my lone B. I'm I've been waiting all day to hear these Mark spicy takes. And Mark, you said you had a spicy take in this race. Let me hear it. Yeah. So I, I think you you set it up pretty well uh, on the four. Um, you know, I, I I think Ways and Means just has a million question marks. Whether it be she's never gone two turns, whether it be we haven't seen her in forever. Clearly, that was not the plan with her to take you know from September through March off. Um, you know, I, and honestly. She did. Oh, she ran okay last year, but why on earth should she be eight to five in this field when her pedigree suspect for going this trip? Chad Brown Barton hasn't been that hot, um, and I just I think there's just a million question marks here, and I just don't get the morning line. I mean, she's a horse to me that should be five or six to one in this field. Um, I actually landed on the two inside horses, Power Squeeze and Do Gooder. Now, I know Josh mentioned the eight as being the E8 type. Uh, I think Do Gooder is actually the faster horse here, and I think that's your horse that ends up on the lead. Uh, horses improved. You know, I realized Maidenbreaker last out first time versus winners. You need to get that the right price. I think you get somewhere around that 10 to 1 kind of price, and I, and I think that's fair here. Um, you know, Jenna Antonucci is, is notorious for kind of taking a while with her horses and they, they take a while to get into shape. Um, yeah, I was expecting that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that this is one who, you know, broker, uh, you know, broker maiden last out on a sloppy track. And you literally just watched me hit my vape cart and then didn't warn me before you made like siren noises. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Josh? Oh, that's great. Um, you know, and, and I think this is a horse who uh, you know, got it done last time out, can pass other horses, uh, has a pedigree that probably is not the best for going uh, any further than this uh, than this race, but should be able to get this trip. And, you know, has that early tactical speed on a track that I think is going to be juiced to the gills. So yeah, I think do gooder, though. The two is my uh, is my top choice. And I also thought the one horse power squeeze, who's won three in a row, um, you know, has a win across the surface and uh, is another horse that should be, I don't know, you know, not as forwardly placed, but should be able to sit kind of that covered up pocket trip. Uh, I actually like to see that the jock from the last out shipped across the state and came to came to get up on this one. Um, because he is actually extremely high percentage with uh, George Delgado. They're what thirty-seven percent together on the on the you know the year so far. So uh, I thought the one and the two were were the two most interesting plays in a race where I think a, a fake Chad takes way too much money. Uh, power squeeze is, I believe, what happened to Chase's couch when uh, Mark visited Arkansas last time. Ouch! That's rough. <laughs> Chase, where did you land here? 
Well, I, I think every horse except for one uh, that, that I'm using have been mentioned. I'm, I'm with uh, Mark on Power Squeeze. I agree with, with Power Squeeze. I think this horse, they, they seem very intentional. Uh, you know, George Wilder <laughs> Where Delgado tends to be. Uh, on top of that, I was also on to end of champagne because I'm like I I do think it's a first run type horse that gets at gets at it here because you know there, there's an overwhelming amount of speed uh, signed on here I think, and then I also used the nine scalable as a horse that maybe can come from a little bit further back. I'm just I've expanded my mind and I've decided like when I'm playing these horizontal sequences if I think if it's coming off the pace I'm going to throw the run style at the problem. And so scalable uh, is a must include. I mean, you get Jose Ortiz for Todd Pletcher and Rapoli on on Florida Derby Day. You know that's going to be dangerous. Um, they this one was running in the BC Juvenile before it even broke its maiden, and still ran fifth. So I I don't know. It's it's a weird horse. I want to go ahead and use it and use it as a horse that I think could could pick up pieces if it, if need be. Also, Wait. Caleb, how are you, baby? Good man, I saw you were on the stream and I had to jump on. Yeah, oh, God. Did Just did you say BC Juvenile? He meant the BC Juvenile Philly. 12. 12. Let's go. Where's the fucking line? Come on. Yes. 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 I was going to Yeah. That's Murph. <laughs> That's hey, Murph cheering he, just he, FYI home. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Oh man, yeah, Caleb, but, did you uh, you get a chance to look at this race at all? I've only glanced at it quickly, and um, I, you know, kind of my my opinion would be similar to what you guys have already talked about. I think Ways and Beans is a horse you have to play against, and I do think Power Squeeze is probably the most interesting of the outsiders in here. Um, to Mark and Chase's point, I mean, I love the win around two turns, even if it did come at Tampa. This horse kind of has wins everywhere, and I think the distance is a big question for a lot of these fillies. So I think Power Squeeze is a really interesting player in here for sure. Nice. Uh, Charles says he is. He's a little scared of the two, but he is. Uh, he's a big fan of the six gun song. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I definitely think. Yeah, I definitely think that Ways and Means is going to be, uh, you know, the horse that that you got to play against in the sequence. Um, but we'll, we'll move on here. Uh, race 12 here, the sand Springs mile in 16th on the turf, uh, for Phillies and mares, four year olds and up. And in this race, uh, we have a seven to five favorite in the eight market segmentation, Cairo concert at three to one candy light, five to one infinite diamond, eight to one. You got double digits on the rest of the field. Mark, were you spicy here as well? I was a little spicy here as well. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah. Uh, I, I took the mark, uh, and I think I'm single in the eight, uh, market segmentation because I mean, if this horse runs its race, I mean, doesn't it just absolutely destroy this field? I That's mean, if, it's a big if you think you think that the I think it is you think the the you know the fact that she kind of you know was pretty flat in the Diana and has been off since you think uh, going to need a couple of races to get back there. Uh, I don't know what happened to the Diana. I, I don't. She was flat, and that came out of nowhere. Um, she was, you know, she didn't take a ton of money, but she was definitely one of the ones in consideration in the Diana, and then runs a flat race and disappears for what 180 days or whatever it is um yeah i i you know again chad brown's barn's been a little bit cold there's so i think there's question marks there um this is the trip that she loves but i, I just you know i sort of need to see a race out of her before i really trust her uh you know trust her on the return and this is you know this is not the toughest of spots to bring her back i think she won this yeah she won this race last year um but i, I just sort of wonder um if the wheels have sort of come off here um, it seems an odd spot to sort of, you know, I mean, it's a odd spot for Chad to bring back a horse that's a G1 winner to bring her back into black type stakes, right? Like, doesn't that just kind of feel a little suspect? Chad sort of, this is a, you know, Chad has no problems off long layoffs and putting him in tough spots and they win first time out. So, uh, yeah, I just, I just really sort of wonder what happened here and why she's being managed as she has been. 
how many more various <laughs> alerts can there be, by the way? Oh, he's got like, a lot. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is an yeah. alert that, that we haven't used in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't needed it in a long time. <laughs> um I don't know, Caleb. What do you what do you think of market segmentation here? So my, my take's a little different. I, I I think this is really Chad maybe being kind of realistic. Um who was the horse that he had that just kept winning at a ridiculous price, like over and over? It won at Tampa a few times and just kept moving up the Fluffy ranks. Socks. Not fluffy socks, no. I said win. Um <laughs> um i can't think of the horse's name but beach beach something or other beach 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 street. patrol no beach something street beach beach some street bleaker street bleaker, oh, street. bleaker street oh, oh bleaker street. Street. yes i think this horse is kind of like that i mean it's a clear of a chore so it's a different connections obviously but i think this is a horse that just i don't think was supposed to be as good as she turned out to be i think her uh new york stakes was Kind of fortunate that she got away with absolute murder on the front end that day. Um, a two length cushion going 50 and change to the half. So I, I just don't think she's a legit grade one horse. It's not to take anything away from her, but I, I guess I'm saying that more in context of I, I'm not surprised she shows up here. It's like, yeah, maybe she could go show up for a, a grade three at Aqueduct once they open the turf or something like that. I mean, sure. But, you know, I think if they put her in you know, the, the Pegasus, you know, Philly and Mayor race whatever it is like i, I think she would have gotten you know, probably uh beaten pretty handily i imagine so I, I think that this is just him being realistic i'm not aggressively against her i wouldn't say she's a stone cold single or anything like that i think there's maybe one or two other horses that more so i just kind of like at a price rather than i think are super big upset threats but no josh i'll be more in your camp and but i think she's legitimate and especially at this level i'm not really alarmed by Per se. I mean, she lost to an Italian Fev Rover and White Beam. So White Beam's kind of whatever, but Fev Rover and Italian are, you know, arguably two of the best horses in that division, or at least were at the time. So. Yeah, I guess maybe the one concern I do have is if you kind of do go back through her uh, through her races, she, you know, the ones where where she really ran well, with the exception of that uh, that Sand Springs. I mean, she is wanted to be like forwardly placed and, and kind of on the pace and you know the the clunker and the diana you know she kind of sat off of it and just kind of didn't really ever kind of get engaged and i guess maybe I, I could be a little concerned that you know she's probably not the maybe she's maybe the third or fourth fastest horse early not necessarily the first or second so Maybe maybe a question mark there on on whether you know she gets too many horses in front of her and then she just loses interest, um, but yeah, I mean I I have a hard time. I mean like I, I tried to make a case for like the three uh, Angel Netashiko, um, you know, kind of being the speed of the speed, but um, and, and cutting back. But uh, I don't know. I, I had a hard time get looking past uh, market segmentation in this spot, but. Mark, I'm dying once again. You telling me you have spicy takes when there's Chad Brown horses in the race? I mean, they just, just blows my mind. I don't know what's going yeah, on with you. Yeah, you actually have the horse uh, up right now that I landed on the nine horse fastest flight. Um, she's got a lot of tactical speed in here. Um, <clears throat> Martin Drexler has is very, very, very good uh, with new stock to his barn. Um, you know, I realize she's a little bit career light on wins, and she's a little bit light on their Gulfstream wins. Um, but, uh, when, uh, you know, Drexler with Gonzalez is what a 33% on the, you know, on, you know, limited starts, obviously on the year. And I think she's the kind of horse that kind of ends up tripping out here. I mean, I, I don't know if she necessarily needs to be on the lead, but I think she can. Yeah. You're, you're welcome. I dropped that in there for, just for you, buddy. Just for yeah, you. I've been using, I've been uh, using it like crazy and I've been like throwing things out, like tripping the fuck out dog. That horse is going to trip the fuck out. <laughs> But no, I, I think she sits a really nice trip in here. Uh, you know, there, there's a chance there's a little speed inside. She might be able to sit just off. Uh, you know, and on these big days, the Gulfstream Park turf tends to also play very speed favoring. So I want somebody who's a little more forwardly placed. 
uh, especially then market segmentation. And I, and I think you also mentioned the other thing that I forgot to mention the first time I around with market segmentation is she's done her best running when she's on the lead. And, and I just don't think she has the natural speed to get there today. I think there's three or four others in here. There's in this race, you know, again, these even going, you know, this kind of distance, these races tend to be a sit and kick affair. And I think there's a little more honest pace in here. So, uh, I like somebody like fastest flight for the, uh, for the upset. Mark, you son of a bitch. I was going to sit here and I was going to be like, hey, guys, you know, who I really like fastest flight. And everyone was going to be like, yeah, Chase, that's a really good horse. I really like what you see there. And then you did it for me instead. We can't, I hate we can't say it. it now if Mark likes it. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> the other horse I was considering was maybe the seven infinite diamond uh, for Patrick Biacon. I got Paco Lopez up is going to give me a. Uh, that was just that was like ten seconds late. That was supposed to be for Mark beating you to the punch on your horse. My bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, because my feelings were real hurt about. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, no, Infinite Diamond. We got Paco Lopez up. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, you've got a couple races that you can throw out that were on the, you know, all weather, a couple of Del Mar where I just had was eased and walked off. I ran a respectable Honey Fox, I thought. I could just kind of be in the mix early enough. And I, I think it's one of these horses that has had it kind of hadn't really chosen what they want to do with it yet and, and it might be showing more now that it's, it's going to be more of a turfer because if you look at the speed figures it seems like the ones that it's putting up on turf are, are faster than what they're seeing on dirt or even all weather i'll actually jump in since um that's one of the horses that i kind of through glancing through I, I watched the honey fox live and i just kind of watched the replay earlier and that race totally fell apart i mean absolutely closers dominated it infinite diamond ran a good race for being a part of that pace that completely melted and arguably just sat a little too close or perhaps moved a little too early. So I, I kind of like your pick here, Chase, uh, much more than Mark's pick. So I'm with you on the seven. Um, the other horse from that. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. If you're, if you're going to pick on me, you, you're <laughs> taking the dirt horse in a turf race. That's what you're doing here. I mean, if, if you do you, but uh, she's not really done. I mean, she's fine on the turf. I mean, if you're looking at that 116 last out time form, I mean, that's, Plenty good enough to get her in the mix. Here. That's faster than what Beach Hunt Trophy, or uh, fastest flight ran last time out. I don't and that think was she's with the candy trip on a soft pace. Doesn't have to be. Shouldn't have to be a dirt horse. Shouldn't have to be a turf horse. She can be pan. You know, she can just kind of like, you know, it's surface preference is fluid. Right. And uh, also coming out of that race is a horse that someone in chat, I think it was Russ, uh, mentioned, which is the one candy light. Uh, five to one is kind of a lame price on this horse i wouldn't take that i hope we get a little bit better though because she had extremely legit trouble in that same honey fox race now the, the thing to consider is that the race was coming apart a lot of horses were coming back how much did that maybe set up her late kick i mean it, it, very well she may have been flattered by the flow of the race but she had absolutely nowhere to go and she looked loaded coming out of the turn going into the stretch in that race so I think she's one that uh, would she have won? Would she have finished second, third? I don't know, but she certainly would have finished much better than where she did. If you look back to some of her previous races, when the grand motion barn, she's been closing into slow paces for a number of those events. So she's kind of been against the flow of the race for a lot of those starts. When she finally had a good race flow ahead of her, she found traffic and found trouble. So she's one that I would give another chance to, especially if you aren't a big believer in market segmentation. So I think both her and, the seven infinite diamond are pretty interesting in here. It feels so weird being gone. a chalk eating weasel on the, on the stream. So we've gone this far and nobody's mentioned Kara Consort, huh? Three to one second choice. I mean, I imagine you guys also the same thing I did, but I just, you know, I feel like we have to talk about her at some point. I mean, do we? Oh, we don't, I guess. You don't have to. She ran better than I thought she would last time, but my, my big knock on her last time was the distance. I think this is a much better distance for her, but and it's probably a more realistic spot given that it's a listed stakes race instead of a grade two or grade three, but I don't know. For me, I mean, I'm just not sure that she's really ever taken that step forward as a four-year-old that I've been waiting to see. Hell, I'm not even sure she took that step forward as a three-year-old for that matter, so yeah, not for me. 
yeah, th- th- that was sort of my take as well. She just doesn't seem like, she, you know, she's going to take money on the connections, but she doesn't seem like she really belongs in this group. She hasn't really put it together in quite a while. And mm-hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of question marks there. A horse that's probably going to be your second choice. Yeah. And I mean, she won those races as an early three year old and just never right. took a step forward from that. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and, you know, even because even you look at the December race, right, which is uh, the, I forget what it is, the Tropical Oaks or whatever, the, um, uh, like, she should have won that race. I mean, she was, you know, two and a half to one favorite in that race and just didn't really run much of a step. I mean, yeah, it looked like it, I mean, there was an honest enough pace in front of her. You you would have thought she would have made up some ground. Yeah, she finished fourth, but, I mean, I don't know. I, after that, and then now going against older, she hasn't really been that close, so... Yeah. Um, anything else in this race you want to talk about? All right. Let's move on to the Appleton stakes here. We're going to be going a mile on the turf. Oh, and let me uh, mention Charles says a 789. Makes a seven eight nine infinite diamond. So he's he's just taking he's taking all the the <laughs> on the wrong league horses. He's just gonna take them all seven eight nine there. Um but the Appleton race thirteen, mile on the turf. Uh and uh we got a morning line favorite of the four big Everest Ice Chocolat at nine to two. Uh, never surprised at five to one. Smoke and tea at six to one. Lucky score and Church Town at eight to one. And then you got double digits everywhere else here. Um, Mark, where did you land? Oh man, um, well, I got a bit of a contrarian plan here, but I'll start off with uh, with the logicals. And you know, I think at least on paper for me, it goes through Big Everest or Never Surprised, one of those two. Um, You know, both of them, uh, you know, have, you know, have speed figures that make them major players. Big Everest really loves this trip. Uh, You know, five of eight of his wins have come, uh, or yeah, five of, yeah, I would say five of his eight wins have come going this distance. Um, You know, and and he's been, you know, in pretty good form, you know, took the, took a bit of the winner off. This is a return to the races. Uh, he tends to fire about well fresh. You know, I, I think Big Big Everest makes a ton of sense. I, I thought Never Surprised. Obviously, you have Never Surprised as an A as well. Was, uh, you know, another horse second off the long layoff, with which Todd is very good at. And, um, and you know, this is probably the race he was being sort of pointed for, uh, you know, with that prep race. So I, I think both Big Everest and Never Surprised, you know, make a ton of sense in here. But, but I think the interesting part of this race is, is sort of the pace complexion. There is a ton of speed in here, and I think they're absolutely going to be cranking on the front end. Uh, so I took a bit of a, I don't know, my, my top choice in here is a bit of a price. Um, thinking that this maybe comes apart and I want somebody that can, uh, you know, has a little bit of a little bit of closing late. And that's the eight Skyro uh, for Brian Lynch, uh, you know, has a bunch of preps on the on Tapita. Um, and is a horse that, again, another one of these ones that doesn't win very often probably needs to, uh, to get his setup. But I think if the, the front end comes off this, which, you know, I'm, you know, mile on the turf sometimes happens. Uh, if this gets a little bit, a little spicy in the front end and comes apart, I think Skyro is an interesting player to pick up the pieces. Love it. Love it. I thought this blows apart on the front too. And I was, yeah. I was, again, I was going to be like, oh guys, I really like this horse Skyro. It's 15 to one. And then. You got me. We've mushed it. Um, <laughs> that one was well timed. Oh, okay. That one was that was worth. <laughs> um, in addition to Skyro, I like this. I, basically, I just kind of went with with Mark here. Like, and also, it's my my New Year's resolution not to single closers. So I'm spread out with Skyro. Uh, I'm using the seven lucky score as another one. I think can kind of get up and get get a piece late. And I did use Ice Shock a lot. Uh, it felt a little bit better taking the 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 second choice and not the not the first choice. But I don't know. I think Ice Shock a lot could also maybe even go off the favorite. Okay, Caleb. Uh, yeah. So I agree with the pace synopsis that uh, you guys have sort of out laid out here. I think it is. I think the front end probably comes off. It's hard to know what's big Everest going to do with Rosario up. Right. 
I mean, last time he came off the pace, is that a, a new dimension for this horse? Is that intentional? If he can do that again, he'll be tough in here. I agree with that. Um, you know, but for me, I, I think it's uh, ice chocolate time. Ice chocolate. I, I've always liked this horse, but I think he's a bit of a difficult horse to place because I, I truly think a mile and 16th is just too far. A mile and an eighth is way too far, but six furlongs is kind of too short. So I've always sort of had him in that weird seven furlong that doesn't really exist. Maybe a mile if he can handle two turns, kind of a horse. And I thought his race two back where he closed into a slow pace here at Gulfstream going this exact trip at a mile was uh, was pretty good. It wasn't the same quality of horses he's meeting here today, but I thought that was a good race. Um, last time out in the Canadian turf, he, he put a good effort in. But again, I think a mile and a 16th is maybe just a shade too far. Uh, Emmanuel, for as much as we like to meme on him, is a decent horse. So, um, you know, I, I do think that uh, Ice Chocolate would be my top pick in here. But I agree with the general consensus of trying to go from off the pace runners if you can. But not quality G. He can't win. You heard it here first, people. Put it, <laughs> put them on all your tickets. Be. Put them on all your tickets. Yeah. Um, so never surprised. Uh, I have as my top pick, and uh, this is uh, this is basically a tone 2.0. Uh, this is a horse that for some reason just finds like one or two races a year to win, uh, and uh, I'm picking this to be the race that that he wins this year. Um, I, I do think I agree with you, Mark, where you're talking about how, you know, Todd does this all the time, gets these horses off these long layoffs, make sure they get a run in before the actual spot. Um, so I, I think this is the, the actual, uh, spot for this horse. I mean, this was a really nice horse, uh, you know, going back two years, uh, two years ago, um, and, and obviously needed a, you know, a bit of a time off. Um, I don't know if it was an injury or something went wrong, but, um, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago that uh, finished uh, second to Colonel Liam in uh, – well, actually, it was that long ago. It was two years. But, uh, you know, two years ago, finished second to Colonel Liam, who, you know, very, very nice turf horse. So, um, yeah, I, maybe maybe I'm I'm hoping for uh, hopping the time machine with this one. But uh, I, I think of the, the horses coming off the pace. I think I do like your horse that you mentioned, uh, Mark, uh, the seven lucky score. I think this is probably the one that, that – I would probably get behind, uh, you know, had, um, has not had like the best of, uh, best of runs the last two. I mean, obviously the BC mile, um, just in over its head there. Um, but I mean, you go back to that Woodbine mile, ran third, to some really nice horses there. Um, you know, it has been able to close in to, uh, you know, to some slow paces, you know, and, and I think if, if gets gets a bit of pace, you know, and we're going back to like the six furlong races at uh, at Woodbine, uh, has been able to pass pass horses and, and win races. So, um, you know, I, I thought the seven lucky score made made a bit of sense here. Um, at, at maybe it's kind of as a B type, but I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna stick to my guns. I'm gonna stick with the lone E8. Never surprised, and uh, you know, we'll hope that uh, this gets Naira special where we think there's a ton of speed and no one goes. Is it maybe it's just me, but there's probably few jockeys I'd like to see less on a horse like Never Surprised than Irad Ortiz. If there's one kind of horse I don't want him on, it's a horse that I think pretty much needs the lead. Maybe he gets this horse to raid a little bit, but God, I just don't see him getting the right trip for this horse. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you. I think there's about yeah, there's there's a lot of other jocks that are much lesser known in the colony. I would much rather see on that horse. I mean, nothing, nothing against Irad. He's clearly the best, you know, best in the country more often than not. But th these are the horses I don't like to bet him on. And uh, and PJ agreeing with you, Caleb. He says it looks like a little class <laughs> relief too there. So oh, now we're cooking. There you go. Uh, and Charles saying there's always one race in the sequence I hate, and this is it. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Every single one of these turf races I have disliked. Anything Greatly. else in this race you guys want to talk about? Besides how much we hate it. Ugh. <laughs> race 14, the Florida Derby. Uh, we're going to be going a mile and the eighth here on the dirt. 
And uh, your morning line favorite at eight to five is the ten fierceness, uh, three to one on Conquest Warrior, seven to two on Hades, and then you get uh, you get your price on everybody else here. Um, you know, I mean, really, I, you really think fierceness is going to get this bet down after that last yeah, effort? Yes, maybe shorter. Yeah. Maybe, maybe probably shorter. shorter. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. six to five, seven to five range. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Is anybody here going to be on fierceness? No. No way in hell. All right. If Mark's not on it, you know, where's EBD? Right the, we, we need EBD. Right, to, right, exactly. To right in the winner's circle. Um, yeah, I was definitely not not about fierceness in this race. Um, I, I had a hard time with this race. I felt like I, I had my top pick written down. Uh, I'll probably end up using more here. Um, I, I got to kind of narrow it down because um, I, I thought my, my strong opinion here is I, I don't want to use fierceness at all. Um, but I, I think the horse that I am a bit interested in, in is the one Frankie's Empire. Um, and this is uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if you were saying this earlier, uh, Caleb, that you want absolutely nothing to do about with any horse coming out of the Fountain of Youth. Was that you? I mean, I made the comment that it was an ugly race. I didn't. Make, I didn't say I want nothing to do with them. Um, the, the short I sent you actually picks Frankie's Empire. So go ahead. I oh. have my proof. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's so funny. So you'll you'll see you'll hear Caleb's thoughts uh, on the, on the YouTube short. But uh, yeah, I, I like Frankie's Empire because uh, and this is this is a uh, this is totally a Caleb Knight angle, which is uh, you know those uh, those uplining pace figures and closing into that slow pace. Um, especially in a race where he's where I think there is going to be significantly more pace than there was before. Um, so I think this sets up for for the one Frankie's Empire. Um, and uh, obviously, apparently, Caleb agrees. But uh, Mark, where did you land? Yeah, you know, I think it uh, this is one of those races you have to decide what you're doing with fierceness. And I think for me, until proven otherwise, I, I think fierceness is just a toss. Um, I, I thought. And I think I said so on stream. I thought the placement was very odd with fierceness going into the Holy Bull. Uh, you know, Todd has your defending Breeders' Cup juvie winner, and he's getting him a Holy Bull prep before the Florida Derby. It just felt really weird. You know, you'd figure, hey, if he needs a race, you'd throw him into an allowance race or something and, you know, get his, you know, make sure he's fit and then, and then point him for this race. It just felt like a really, really odd spot to put him. Um, and, and I think, you know, they're, they're kind of grasping at straws with this guy, uh, trying to figure out what his deal is. He's thrown two clunkers, um, you know, looks good when he brings his a game, but I, I just don't trust him at all. I don't, I don't know. It just, it doesn't, I have watched a lot of Todd Pletcher trained horses, how he's managed. This horse just feels very off. So I don't know what the deal is, but, uh, he's just not one that I'm, uh, I'm super excited to, uh, to bet on here. Um, and I think then it, you get into, okay, well, what do you do with the, with the kind of the rest of the horses? Um, you know, I, I conquest warrior makes some sense, but if you look at the outside posts at Gulfstream, the 9, 10, and 11 posts are basically in dirt routes are winning at like 5%. Uh, they're terrible places to be. So I, I think you kind of have to disregard a lot of the outside horses. And I think, you know, Conquest Warriors done some good stuff, but this is a big step up in class for him um, at what will probably be second or third choice. Um, and then you have Hades, who's done nothing but win, won the Holy Bull. I, I think that Holy Bull was a bit of a weird race. And, you know, I, I, you know, as he's stretched out, do I really like him going further? I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I, I my, my feeling is that this is a horse that probably wants a mile, a mile and a 16th kind of range. and isn't a horse that really wants to be stretched out. So, uh, after that, I, I started you know, digging around a little bit and looking for horses that I was a little more interested in. And it, my top choice in here is the six, La, La Dame Bro. Um, this is a horse that, uh, has some speed, can be involved early, but also can pass other horses. Um, you know, is a horse that if you look at on time form figures, every one of his six races, he's improved. He's gotten a tiny little bit better in every single race. Um, and his, you know, he's as the time form on that last race came back as a 110. Uh, he's got the second fastest time form fig in the field. Uh, if I'm if I'm doing my uh, if I'm looking through and finding it correctly at 15 to one. So it's a horse that I don't think he needs to take much of a step forward to be a major player in here. So the uh, Don bro where I'm going to be is as uh, my top choice. 
Chase? You mentioned Frankie's Empire. I like that one quite a bit, Josh. Uh, if I had to pick out another price that I like and will play and use, it's the three Bayless out. Pletcher, Rapoli. Uh, this one ran, I mean, a, a decent enough maiden race on good dirt. It then freaks on the all-weather. I want to see what this does. If I get a little pop in, in performance off the all-weather here. Uh, on the stretch out, I mean, looking at Lucky on the top line, Giants Causeway on the bottom line, you shouldn't have any sort of issue with the stretch out and distance here by any means. And it's a horse that's on the improve. It's very lightly raced. So, I mean, maybe green, but also maybe just kind of plucks a couple of horses that are that are tired from the, the Florida Derby prep circuit, I guess, uh, off here. Uh, so, I mean, Todd and Irad, Florida Derby Day. I, I can't really can't really go against it. I can't say that I, that I can beat it with with another horse. Um, so yeah, I'll try Bayless out there, and then uh, Frankie's Empire. All right, and Caleb, I know you uh, you gave out that that one on the the video. I'll be going up uh, later tonight. But uh, any any other thoughts on this race? Yeah, we can talk a little bit more about just the field in general. And you know, I, I think you can make arguments like, oh, the distance is a question, or the pace is a question, but really if the good fierceness shows up, then I think this them. race is a race for second. Nobody right. beats the fierceness that shows up in the Breeders' Cup. Hell, right. no one probably beats the fierceness that broke his maiden for that matter. So I don't think the question is so much, oh, does he want this trip or even the post to, to a certain extent. It's, it's more or less, is this just an inconsistent horse? Did something go wrong? Did he hate the surface i mean what happened because he's done this twice now where he just completely disappoints at an overwhelming favorite so you know for those reasons he's not for me but by the same token i'm not going to be surprised if he wins this by four lengths um that being said i'm you can't i, I don't think you can use that horse at eight to five or shorter um if you want to if you love a bomb and want to include him then that's your uh, your choice but he's not for me and then, in my opinion, and I talked about this a little bit in the short that I'll post later, after him, the entire field feels really even to me. There isn't like a default second pick, right? I, mean, I don't know if you guys did the Arkansas Derby or not, but um, if you look at that race, you have Timberlake and Muth. You know, you have there's a there's a one A a one B kind of a deal. To me, it's fierceness, and then there's kind of everybody else. I don't really get the love for Conquest Warrior, a horse who, yeah, has been visually impressive, but by the numbers really isn't that fast no faster than anybody else in here you're pretty average uh and also a horse that hasn't really improved much kind of ran the same race three races in a row now so you're kind of banking on fierceness not showing up and a couple others in here are not improving and conquest warrior also improving and you're getting three to one for that from the from an outside draw for me i i just don't get it i'm not he's he's some people's derby horse and i just don't understand it if he wins this race, then I'll be proven wrong. But right now, that, that's one I also want nothing to do with. So with all that being said, I mean, I think you got to look for some prices in here or horses with upside. So that's kind of why I did land on the one Frankie's Empire. I, I'll talk about it more in the short. But essentially, um, he's improved essentially every start of his career, H has moved a little bit forward, even more so if you throw out the turf race and the race in the slop where that's really not what he wants to do. I think he gets a nice cozy trip behind what should be a pretty contested pace, save some ground. I have a little bit of questions about the distance. I mean, maybe he's more of a miler than a mile and an eighth type, but uh, in a field that looks pretty suspect, he's one I'm willing to take a shot with. All right. Anything else on this race? What is, what is going on that we get, we've been getting through these sequences in like record time lately. That's crazy. I love that an uh, hour plus is record time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Caleb, uh, did you take a look at the Arkansas Derby at all? Did, did you want to give any thoughts on that? or? Uh, yeah, I think if some quick thoughts on that. Um, the the objective take there is that – did you guys already cover that first, I assume? Yeah. 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 yeah so, I mean, I, I think the objective take is that Timberlake and Muth are winning this race 75% of the time probably between the yep. two of them. I yep. prefer Timberlake <laughs> to Muth. Um, I think he is – I like his prep much better in the Rebel. Muth – I thought the seven furlong comeback race for Muth was kind of weird. Um, he doesn't seem to put wins 
together two in a row. I mean, he, he did win that last race in the San Vicente, but at the time didn't come back super impressive. So uh, for me, I mean, I, I much prefer Timberlake to Muth. I think he's your most likely winner. There's not much value in there. So I thought that the uh, the long shot that I tipped in the short, who seems to be everybody's long shot, uh, including good friend Matt DeSantis, who I, I talked about this horse with a little bit, is the number five liberal arts. Um, this is a horse that if you look at his numbers, whether it's time form, thoroughgraph, or you know anything else, has literally never went backwards. He has always either paired or moved up in each start. Had a right to need that last start off the layoff in the Southwest. Was also a little bit off the rail on a day when the rail was really good on that February 3rd. Uh, we saw Mystic Dan take advantage of the rail and just blow by the rest of the field. Liberal Arts was somewhat inside, but he wasn't on that good fence. So I, I think he ran an okay race. I think he's going to move forward. I do wonder if he gets the pace setup he needs because uh, I don't see a ton of speed in this race. But, but he's the long shot that I like the best. The other horse who I didn't mention in the short is the number eight just steel this horse is probably over the top i, I kind of think he's just been over raced and he he's past the prime of what he's going to do for this kind of racing cycle without needing a breather or maybe a break but he's not as bad as his last two races his last race for sure and even his race two back in the southwest it it's better than it looks he was on top of a pace that fell apart in the southwest and was wide the entire time against a golden rail and still ran a pretty okay second, you know, whereas Mystic Dan relished the off-going and took advantage of the golden rail to get the win. And then last time, he had an impossible trip. He was five wide on both turns, lost so much ground, it's unbelievable. And then, yeah, obviously came up short. I don't like him at a mile and an eighth, so that's kind of why I, I'm not super high on him. But 15-1 to one for a horse that's much better than his recent results would indicate, I think this horse gets a piece, and he's the kind of horse I would key in second and third. Yeah, I, it's kind of exactly how I play it with Timberlake on top and this this horse, yeah, just steal as my bigger price. I think Mystic Dan, that number's a fluke. I think that Southwest number is just fluky because that horse got just a dream trip, absolute dream trip in that race. So a, a candy-ass trip even? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. So catch me back up. I'm what? sorry for the viewers after hear Mark and Josh drivel twice, but uh, where did you guys land in 30 seconds or less? Favorites. Yeah. I landed on Muth. Timberlake. I, know, I, dude, I, I'm, I landed on Mark horses the entire time, and, really Mark did. and Mark didn't land on Mark horses. So I'm just like, I don't know what the heck is going on. I think last week Mark landed on a horse that he said was a Josh horse and was a surprise I wasn't on it. Uh, I mean, that horse didn't run a step. But um, my horses generally don't either, so I, I think maybe he maybe it was true to form, Mark. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like like we were talking about, and you know we got some time, so I, I think we can uh, we can talk about this a little bit more um, more 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 generally, right? It, this is just a. I talked with this uh, with Andrew about this uh, in particular. How just how weird this derby prep season was going to be with you know bob hasn't been uh, allowed in the derby for what this is the third year in a row now um but the first two years his good horses were kind of moved around right and and they were still you know they were still around but now you know he's he's kept the horses the owners have stuck by him and stuck them with him and like I mean, none of the horses out west have gotten any points uh, because of, because of that, and now he's coming to Arkansas to take Chase's points. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's just it's just made for for a very very weird weird uh, just weird season, and and I think in particular this race and and the Santa Anita races have been weird because I just people think people don't want to enter them. I mean, why why do you would you want to enter this race? When right. you know, normally, hey, you might have one Bob, one Bob horse in there, you know, because he does, he does send one or two usually to Oakland. But like, because I, I, the rumor was that like Muth was supposed to be here for the Rebel, I believe, and so it ended up very, ended up Timberlake, and then very lightly kind of entered. Like I didn't feel like it's a really strong Rebel outside of Timberlake, and so yeah, I, I feel like people have been kind of trying to duck some of these bob horses shipping in 
and uh, you're you're getting some wonky entries at the entry box at, at different like I, it it trickles down to like fairgrounds too fairgrounds and even like Gulfstream as to what's happening where the people are sending these horses. But I, I guess to, to the the bigger point too is that like this is like these couple races like last week this week we're really supposed to see like the Derby horses and like. Right. I feel like I haven't seen them yet. I feel like we're in maybe second prep, right? We're not final preps, you know? So I don't know if this, maybe this is the year we get, um, you know, we, we, we get bluegrass and Lexington horses that that's where, you know, some of these surprise horses are going to come from. Um, I mean, we still do have uh, the Santa Anita Derby, but who the hell knows what's going to happen there? Like they've had a hard time getting any horses to run out West, let alone, for the derby preps. So I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like you're going to, yeah, David, David Brees is saying Japan, uh, mm -hmm. Mark, you know, I know you're going to, you're probably going to talk about the, uh, the UAE derby. I think you might do a, a video yep. for that. Yep. I mean, we're going to get, you know, the horses coming from there, but you, Hey, like maybe, maybe I'm still thinking about my Derma Sotogake future bet from last year, but, I mean, if there's any year that a Japanese horse might win it, don't you think it might be this year? I mean, we've like, been saying it for two years. We can't. I can't do it again. I can't. This is the third year. I can't do the exact same thing. I've been two years in a row. I've said this is the year. It was crowned. You got pride rich, before. striked, and then maged. I got rich, striked, and maged when I was crowned pride and and Derma Sotogake. And I've been saying it's it's going to happen. And I just I'm going to stop saying it. Um, and I'm just going to let this be the year that I get beat by the Japanese horse. You know, the last time you stopped betting a horse or shit, you stopped that was uh, why are you like combatant, this? Combatant in the why, uh, why are you like this? Big cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey you got you got your revenge because remember Jakarta and that park stakes where she went off at like 20 to one, and I finally Road Warrior, Road Warrior was like. He was like, he was like messaging me. He's like, congrats, Josh. I'm so happy for you. And I'm just like, I'm like, you have no idea. You just have no idea, do you? Oh, man. But I, I mean, oh, and Mark, I know. I'm sorry. We didn't talk about the, uh, <laughs> there, there's another prep too that I mentioned basically every single prep uh, you could possibly mention except for the Wood Memorial. Hey, maybe this is the year a horse in the wood wins. Maybe it'll happen. Josh's memory is about three days, so he's, you know, it'll it'll happen, and then with three days later, he'll forget about it, anyways. But uh, no, I mean, I don't. I, I, I think that this prep season has been weird. I, I think you know Bob Baffert thinks he's bigger than horse racing. Um, the media thinks he's bigger than horse racing, so he's playing the fu to the. CDI. Um, but I also think that there's some argument that the you know overall the Derby's status as a major horse race has diminished to some degree. Um, and, and I think this is a bigger sign of that. That yeah, people want to point their horses for the Derby. Everybody wants to have a Derby starter and everybody wants to have a Derby winner, yada yada. But it, it's less important as a race than it was 10 or 20 years ago. Um, yeah, could a Japanese horse win? Sure. Could somebody out of any of the other preps win? Sure. But let's let's see. I mean, uh, I, I I I don't know. I, I actually haven't capped the UAE Derby yet. Um, haven't capped the Woodcard either yet. But I have tomorrow off, so I have tons of time to handicap. But I mean, like, it's a weird year, you know. It, it, in general, I mean, I'm going off of memory. Here, don't we say that every year though? Like, don't we every year go? This is a weird year. I mean, usually I can latch onto a horse at this point or two horses, even if they're wrong. I can at least find a reason to like them. <laughs> Whereas, like this year, I can't even do that. You assume it probably takes a mid 120s to win the Kentucky Derby on time form, yeah. 123 to 125 maybe. Like I think the fastest horse out of any of the Derby contenders is like a 114, and that's a horse catching freedom who just ran in the prep. Like Sierra Leone is your current Derby favorite overseas yeah. at six to one. Is anybody betting Sierra Leone at six to one in futures right now? I mean, Dornock is second choice. In futures, seven no, to one. but. I mean, in futures, no, no, I would, I would not at six to one, no. But I don't I have a Chad future, simple so. alert. I'm sorry. I mean, if the race was tomorrow and there's 20 other horses, are you taking Sierra Leone at six to one? Given the what I've seen from the rest of the horses, yeah, honestly, I would. 
here's awesome. here here's my theory this is what bob has done this is what no bob sorry has done to the kentucky derby is it's made it possible for closers to win this race again that's the cool part it makes it possible for closers to win this this race again because he doesn't have one of his monsters out on the front that can re-break and outrun everybody you know like horses are doing what regular horses do and they start coming back to the pack and then you have these horses like rich strike and mage who can pick up the pieces from from way off it's become a more tactical trip but i think a more tactical race without bob being in it I, I don't hate that take at all. All right. Well, that's, that's gonna cool. do it. That's gonna do it for us here on uh, for this week here. Chase, plug your stuff. Where, where are you gonna be at? What are you doing? Yeah, uh, I've got an episode of the pod uh, that I did yesterday uh, with uh, Keith from Keith's Cash Plays on the Trust the Profits channel. Uh, looking at the Arkansas Derby early pick five, uh, just did an episode with Matthew DeSantis. So it's going to be out tonight, uh, doing the whole card with a hundred dollar budget. And then tomorrow morning, uh, Andrew Champagne joining me for our Friday morning, uh, coffee date to talk the late, uh, pick five for, uh, Arkansas Derby day. So check it out. The notorious OTB, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, my, my socials are there. Check those, check those out. If you don't, Oh, yep. And then you can check us out at ontherongleadcom at wrong underscore lead on Twitter. You can also uh, you'll be finding some more uh, more videos going up. Uh, we'll have some stuff going up for um, UAE our uh, Dubai World Cup, um, and uh, yeah, we'll have some shorts going on there. Caleb, a little bit more in depth uh, analysis from Caleb on a couple of the races, uh, and uh, yeah. Have a good weekend, guys. Let's win some money. 12! Let's go! Where's the fucking line?